So let's have another case study where we automate an application by bypassing its API. In this case, it's Instagram. So I'm using Instagram more at the moment. One of the things that Instagram doesn't let you do is inside a post, if I have a post and I want a URL, I can't have a clickable URL in there. So what we end up doing is we end up saying things like putting the link in the post just as text and hoping people will pull it out or saying use the link in the profile. And the link in the profile is when you come to the profile, this link here. Now what people do is they update the link in the profile to the last post that they've done. There are services that let you collate all the links in the profile and have them on a single page. So I've written a tool that does that. And this was a manual tool where I would paste in the ID for Instagram and the link I wanted it to go to and it would build this page up. I decided to automate that. So what I now have is I have a single URL that I go to that scans my most recent post in Instagram, looks for URLs. If there's a URL, it creates a entry in this page with a link to that URL with the Instagram snapshot and does it automatically for me. And the way this works is I'm not using the Instagram API. When I look at the Instagram page, what I see is quite interesting. I can see a whole bunch of stuff and very little HTML because all of it is dynamically created using this JavaScript. And basically, <laughs> the HTML page that's returned is a set of includes for some JavaScript that will process the JavaScript to build the page. Now, this is essentially data. This is JSON. This is JavaScript data that I could parse and use. This is the kind of thing that an API would return. So I could theoretically use this home page as my API if I just parse this. So one of the things I did first was I used Postman to call that with minimum headers to see if the uh, data is passed back sensibly from that initial request, which it was. The data is in there in the JSON so I could parse this quite easily. So I then had to just write some simple code that treats this application as an API. And I'm treating this call to the home page as an API call. And everything here from this point to the start of the page is a header that I will parse out. And everything after this JSON down here. There we go. Everything from here on down is going to be footer. So I'm going to make a make a request, take off the header, take off the footer, and then I'm going to be left with JSON that I can parse and treat as if it was a normal API. That's quite simple. And I've actually done this in PHP. So you're going to see some PHP code because this is live on my website. And the way this works is there are some risks when you automate like this. So I have tried to guard against some of those risks. So I check in this code uh, whether the uh, header and footer information has changed because it's not a real header and footer. So what I do is I look in the text for that code, that script type with the window.shared data. I basically say everything from this before is header, strip it out, and process that until I get to this script tag and then drop everything afterwards. So I just do string extract in order to get the JSON information. That is not a robust way of doing it. If I was hitting the API, hopefully I would get the JSON back directly. I'm not doing that, so this is a little bit less robust. Now they might change the page format. They might change this variable name in their page. They might do a whole bunch of things. So what I do is I read the page I check that I found the basic things. If I found it, I will then assume that what is in there is JSON and then I will process it. In PHP, JSON processing is really simple. I just use the JSON decode command on a string and then I get a hash array of all the values. Uh, sometimes I have to understand it so I know what the key is, I know whether there's an array, I know whether the value is coming back as a string, but that's up to me, and it's a very simple parse here. I'm basically taking the JSON, 
finding the user and I do another double check. I double check that the user information that I've got is me, is the stuff that I'm parsing. Because I've got no real security on this now because it's automated. I'm only expecting it to be my stuff. Then I had to do some regular expression parsing to pull out the HTML. I'm going to have another video explaining how to test this, but this is the regular expression I use. And basically I look in each post, try and find something that matches that. If it matches that, I assume that's the HTML or HTTP page that I want to link to, and I will then extract that out. I then go off to Instagram, get the thumbnail, and get the description. And I've covered this functionality in a different video. So that's pretty simple. But this is a, an actual live function that when it runs, let me show you. So at this point it's gone off to Instagram. It's found every post with a link in it. And it's checking whether I've already processed this post. So that's fairly automated. I could create another Instagram now, put an HTTP URL in the description. It will automatically link it back. That's quite handy and it's very simple and it's an extension of that app as API concept where we use the app in as minimum way as possible to treat it as an API. And in this case, Instagram was simple because it has JSON embedded in the HTML code. So all I do is make the call, strip out the parts of the page I don't want, treat the rest as the results of an API call, and then I'm good to go. And I tested it first of all, with making a postman request to make sure I could parse it back. The other thing I did, let me show you this. In order to understand this and make sure it was valid JSON, because at this point it isn't, I just did a search for JSON validator. Use the first JSON validator that I found, I think. And then I get a pretty print view of the JSON. That was very easy. I know now that it's JSON. I can easily see it and I can figure out what code I have to do to parse through. So hopefully that gives you some extra ideas on how to work with your applications, because sometimes we don't need to go the whole hog of automating this stuff through the GUI. I could have automated through the GUI. I could have gone to Instagram. I could have found each of the posts. I could have extracted the information. But I didn't do that, because this was easier. <laughs>